Welcome back to Dow Twang. I'm Dave. I just want to show you some stuff today pretty quick. Um, I was on this simple rock rhythm riff here, but stuff that I think you can really use. And I'm basing this on some feedback that I got from some of you in the comments and um, some folks that I've been uh, emailing with and stuff a little bit. Um, and I hope this really addresses uh, some of the things that, that you all are interested in. It's, um, it's good general information, too, if this is your first time. Um, but a lot of you have asked, you know, about, like, hey, you know, yeah, we kind of get the scales and stuff that you're talking about. And, you know, what are some of the more kind of stylistic things and, and, and uh, uh, ways to really make it musical, right? That's, I'm getting that comment. Like, I, I, I got the concept, but I'm not, not feeling like I'm really free with it. And so um, I really appreciate those qu types of questions um, because they really go after what we try to really focus on on this channel, right? Which is um, improvisational exploration and individual um, um, styles. So I'm going to show you some stuff that I do. Um, but remember, this is just to sort of prime the pump for your own creative um, um, exploration. And I'm going to keep this pretty concise. Um, the progression here is A and G, and it's just kind of a straight rock, you know. A... That sort of thing. And that'll be your practice loop for this as well. And I'm going to use the major pentatonic and minor pentatonic to really demonstrate these these style elements. And if you're not familiar with those scales, then this video would serve you well in that respect, right? I'll put some diagrams in the description um, section and you can use the uh, backing track to just learn these scales and rehearse them and get those under your fingers. There's other um, videos on this channel that really feature these um, note sequences as well. So for today, we're going to use this. There's a bunch of places you could play, you know, a major pentatonic, for example. Here's one of them. Um, so, and let me guide your attention specifically to these two center strings. Kind of a, a four corners, I call it, a box right there. And that's really where we're going to be hanging out today. And there's a higher octave of it up here. Hear how those are the same, an octave apart? And so I'm bending, you know, this top one in the four corner. Okay. Now, before I do another little demonstration here, let's just work on um, connecting those two octaves. So if I've got... Now, I like to use these two fingers a lot when I'm just working in that box. I like the power of having your whole hand kind of right there. Right? But when you're moving up here, replace that one with this one. Slide up to, and it's going to set you down right where you want to be. Watch this again. And I think I usually do 
just use my third finger again coming back down. That's just me. Do what, what feels, mess around with that. But going up, that switch into this one really works. <laughs> Okay, now we've got some got some good ideas there. Some hammers going on here, like That's starting on the lowest one of the four corners, and then starting on the highest one, pulling off and going down like that. some repetition and and you know hang out on that root a lot and kind of dance around with that use that as kind of your pivot point to swing from <laughs> if you will sort of right you don't always have to start and end on it and everything but that at first that's a good thing to do just to get that really solid in your ear and it gives you kind of a a, a place to work from it. Everything's not just kind of all over the place, right? With your hand, you get kind of anchored. All right, let's see what happens. Here's a little example. few of those licks were all right and you know you're you're gonna get a little you know it'll seem a little mundane but you know that's the that's the thing is that when you're practicing you want to drive that stuff in you don't always do it the same way but you do a lot of repetition of it and a lot of muscle repetition and then your, your, your real musicality will come out through those physical skills, okay? Um, that's the process that we're really after when you kind of can kind of turn off your brain and you start from, from, the, from the mechanical part. And you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go up here and, 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 and try those kind, that kind of feel up on some other notes and stuff. And you'll get there. The way to get there, though, is to stay down in that, in those four corners and really work out, man. I mean, really go after it. Kind of a, a dance like nobody's watching type of thing. Even if it just seems ridiculous how, how, how much you're doing on those four notes, just, just do it. It'll really help you, really build you up. So that's pretty much it. Because um, what I just told you, you really take yourself to task that's going to keep you busy you get that that uh, uh backing track going and you work out on that the other thing that i would add that you can start doing after a while is throwing in a minor pentatonic run here and there um and that'll kind of help you break the monotony of that right if you start you know, i just i feel like i need to put something else in there well here's an idea of how to do that there's that major. You hear how that got kind of bluesy, that minor pentatonic, right? So you start, and you can use some of the same stylistic elements, right? When you switch over to that in your phrasing, it's really cool. Now, here's an example. I won't go real fast. I did this in the intro as well. Does that 
make sense? I don't want to dwell on that too much because that four corners thing on that major pentatonic, that's the meat and potatoes of this um, for today. And we're going to do a part two on this where I'm going to really show you a little bit more about the right hand stuff you can do. You can mix in a little bit of that hybrid picking if you want to go a little faster. Okay, that's just a preview. And it's not just about going faster. It's just that sometimes when you kind of run out of pick speed, some of you have asked about, I guess I'm doing this with my reaching down with this finger more than I realized. I don't really talk about that very much. And I'm going to address that in part two. But for now, really work out on that. Okay, that's your, your routine. I appreciate all of you. I love all the feedback and the conversation with everybody. Some of you have been putting up videos of you playing over these um, uh, practice loops. Those are great. What There's no better way for me to get feedback about what everybody's doing than that, right? And that's really fun. It's something that y'all could have fun um, together, too, you know, uh, uh, if you have a way to make a recording using the the um, loop. I'm not sure exactly how everybody's doing that, but some of them are, have figured it out. Um, but I really look forward to uh, talking to you soon, and let me know how you're doing with everything. Thank you.